Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and this is a really interesting product we're going to be looking at today and it's called a cable comb. My friend Patrick here is going to be using it. It comes apart like that. It's used for uh, straightening out cable and making it look nice and neat. So when you're doing your installation, uh, you can use this and it pretty much the name of the product describes what it is. It's a cable comb. So you know, you have all the cables on the ground like this, just to give you an idea, and they need to go into a data rack up there at the patch panel. What we need to do is make it look neat. Neatness counts in cabling, because the neater it is, the easier it is to troubleshoot. So you put a little extra effort in making it neat, making it compact. When it comes time to troubleshoot it, it's a lot easier. So let's take a look at this cable comb. Let's see how it works. There's some finger holds right here. So you know that's the direction that you're going to pull and comb it with. So get that started. This is the direction it goes on the cable. I have about 30 cables here. I'm going to split them up so that I can go half of them to the left and half of them to the right. So we're going to load up the comb, start loading up the cables, kind of where they naturally fall in the bundle. There's several little canals to fill on the comb. The comb itself will handle about 30, 24 to 30 Cat 5E or Cat 6 cables. Okay, so we've got the cable comb loaded. I'm going to keep, so I don't have to hold this, I'm going to keep one tie wrap to the front. Slide your tie wrap along and Keep everything dressed nicely. So you're using Velcro in this install? Yes. So why do you use Velcro? Let me explain that. Well, I'm, you keep from pinching the cables too tight with tie wraps. You can just use Velcro to keep it neat. And also, if you're going to add another cable later, you don't have to cut all the tie wraps out, you just undo the velcro and add another cable in. But there's also nothing wrong with using cable ties. This, you just don't want to tighten them extremely tight because that can mess up the, the cable itself. Uh, so you don't want to pinch the cable, you just want to put the, the tie wraps on snug. But this is a nicer idea because you're always ending up or most of the time you end up with adding cables in the future and this I allows you the flexibility. I pre-cut several of these strips to the length that I need them. And of course what we do is we sell rolls of this Velcro on our website so you pre-cut what you need. Gives you a little flexibility there. Plus, it's a little less expensive buying it by the roll. And towards the end here, and you'll get a little bit of this tangle out if you start getting towards the end. Yeah, well, if you're a professional cabler, this is the type of tools that you need, even if you're not a professional. If, if you want a job that looks professional, this is the type of tools you need. And if you're, if you're doing cabling on a regular basis and you're not using one of these tools, it's taking you a long time to give you that nice, clean look. This tool saves time, makes it looks, look professional, works really well. If you're using it on a regular basis, you're doing cabling on a regular basis, it will pay for itself in a day. Look how neat that cable is now. Where everything is completely neat, and when we're all done, we're even going to make it tighter than this. We're getting to the end. It's just keeping everything as tight as possible. And we're all done, we're going to be adjusting those tie wraps anyway, because you got to put some turns in it, things like that, but at least there's no knots and kinks. And cable that's wrapping around each other things like that pretty much once you get to the end here and you see all these short cables like here it, it just doesn't make sense to go much further now what we're doing here is 
if you tape the end like this with your tape, it's easier to fish it through the holes and the D-rings and the cable management. So you take it all the way to the end. Nothing is sticking out. The cables aren't going to get caught on anything. And so now you have a nice little tail. And nothing is sticking out. Now that is a lot easier to route through your D-rings and, and the rest of your uh, cable management. Now you always want to pull extra cable. You don't want to pull just the amount you need because you will have a horrendous time trying to fish it through and make it nice and neat. So you always want to pull extra. You know, when you cut it off, you can't use it anywhere else, you recycle it. But I think that when you get a thousand foot box of cable, it's usually about 10% of it is, is waste. If you try to manage it too tightly, you know, it will cost you more money. Because the most expensive cable in the world is the cable that's one inch too short. Okay, we're going to dress the first cable in right here and pull the string back. Okay, those are two patterns here. We're going to follow the T568B pattern, which is the bottom. White, blue, blue, white, orange, orange, white, green, green, white, brown, brown. And that's right across here on number one. Start by taking a little bit of the twist out. Cat 5E cable. Yeah, Cat 6 cable is a lot harder to take the twists out. Sometimes you've seen that little trick where you use the actual insulation to remove the twists on the Cat 6. One of the things you want to do though is as much as possible keep the twist as close as you can to the punch down. So you don't want to take every twist out and make it straight. Half inch to the point of termination. Yeah. Maintain the twist up to a half inch to the point of termination. Okay. You have that. 110 blade. And the cutter is on the top. Let me show the blade here. You can see where that cutter is on the top. So it pushes it in and trims it at the same time. So watch. Uh, that's this one. Look how nice and neat that is. And the twists are kept as tight as possible up to the actual uh, up to the actual uh, punch down. You can see it there. And the color code in there. In other words, this is Jack. This is port one on the other side of the patch panel. And there's your two color codes right there. So we followed 568B. You can do either, but just make sure that both sides uh, use the same standard. Uh, so each link has to match each end or else you end up with a crossover cable uh, rather than a straight through. So the jacks now, since we did the 568B, both sides now uh, need to be done 568B. And uh, generally, most commercial installations, just as standard, is, is uh, 568B. It seems like government is 568A, government installs. doesn't matter. Either one will work as long as the jacks are punched down, either A or B, to match the back of the patch panel. Hello, this is Patrick. And this is Jim. Thank you for watching our video, and please visit our site at www.cablesupply.com.